Hey guys, my name is Keo and welcome to Honeycomb. If you're enjoying our content, do click the thumbs up button and like and subscribe. It goes a long way and it's something free that you can do to help this channel. What I wanted to do today was show you guys how we do cold brew here in Honeycomb. And this is actually a video that we're making so that our own baristas can refer to it in the future if they're going to be making cold brew for the space. So what do you need to make cold brew? How do we do it here? How do we achieve the mouthfeel that we're looking for? How do we achieve the balance? We're gonna cover all of it in this video. Hopefully it won't take too long. So first you'll need two receptacles. First you'll need one in which we will be making the cold brew. Uh, we'll be steeping it in, in here for 12 hours, maybe 16 hours. I would say 12 hours minimum. And then after the 12 hours, we're gonna need to pour it into another receptacle. So you need a second one to receive the cold brew. Now we're going to be straining that through a V60 cone with a V60 filter. So you need those things as well. But for now, we're gonna take this setup and put it aside because we're not gonna need that until tomorrow. What do we do? So we start here first with our receptacle. We're gonna put it on top and I am going to tear the scale so it says zero, zero. Next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our coffee and I forgot to say, this is the other thing that you do need. And uh, this is actually our purge jar. So when every time we use a grinder, we change the setting or we change coffees, we throw a little coffee into the grinder and grind it out. Purging the grinder removes any of the previous coffee. You also need to do that if you are changing grind sizes. So in honeycomb, it's kind of like a mortal sin the throwaway coffee. We respect coffee a lot, so we store all of it. And this is actually what we use to make our cold brew. Stick with me, because I know some of you are like cringing right now, but trust me, this is one of the tastiest ways to make cold brew. Now, every cold brew tutorial out there will tell you, do not use espresso fineness grounds. And these are all almost exclusively espresso fineness grounds. Tomorrow, we're gonna see why this is ideal and why we choose to make our cold brew this way. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna take this coffee, I'm gonna pour it in here and find how much coffee we actually have. Okay, so according to our scale, we have 67.2 grams of coffee. Now for our cold brew, we use a ratio of one is to nine. So for every one gram of coffee, we use nine grams or nine milliliters of water. All we're gonna do is take some drinking water, our other ingredient, and we're gonna add it into this range server without resetting the scale. So we're just going to keep on pouring until the 672 moves one step forward and we end up with 672 ml inside of our carafe. All right, so we went a little bit over. Right now we have 676 ml of water, that's okay. There's a very large margin for error when we're brewing cold brew. And you'll see in the video, there's some parts that are still dry, not yet impacted by the water. You have an option, you can actually just let it sit and it's actually gonna get wet over time. But me, I'm gonna give that a little stir to make sure that everything is wet. And that's pretty much it. We're gonna leave it for at least 12 hours we are willing to leave, let our cold brew sit all the way until about 16 hours. At some point, there's nothing left to extract. So the only thing that's happening is that you're getting a more intense flavor. And for us, 12 hours, 14 hours, or 16 hours are kind of the different ones that we use. So see you tomorrow. And we're back. What was mere seconds for you has been 14 and a half hours for us. So yeah, like what I just said, it's 12 to 16 hours, 14 is kind of the spot that we like to do it with. And it's also good for our workflow, meaning uh, we can close at 10 p.m., make the cold brew, and the next day at lunchtime is when we can strain it out, which is what we're gonna do right now. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir this up and try and get all of the coffee off of the bottom and suspend it into the liquid first and once that's a nice consistency and I can feel that there's no more coffee in the bottom of this thing I'm gonna start pouring it into this V60 now we did rinse the filter to remove any flavors so we rinse it with hot water 
and then we let it cool down and we don't rinse it over the receptacle so that we don't end up with too much water in the receptacle. We're gonna try and pour in as much coffee as possible into this cone and try to get as much of the grounds into that cone as possible. And what's gonna happen here, as you see it drip down, is that in the beginning, the filter is not yet saturated, it's not yet full of fines, and there is not that much coffee that's settled inside the V60. So this coffee, if we taste it now, will taste a lot similar to a lot of other cold brews that you've tasted uh, throughout the years. But what we're doing different is that instead of just having a straight immersion cold brew, we're kind of doing this second kind of bed filtration percolation stage where we're pouring the coffee through coffee grounds again. And it's not just filtering through the paper, it's also filtering through itself, through its own coffee. And that's going to result in a much smoother mouthfeel and an extra round of agitation that kind of just brings out a little bit more flavor. But um, flavor at this point is kind of secondary to the mouthfeel that we want to achieve. So every time that the volume drops out, I'm just going to continue adding coffee in. Now that's going to continue to drip. And this stage can actually take up to an hour to fully drip down. You want to let it drip until every drop has come through that cone. And then at the end, we'll give it a few taps. So resist the temptation to taste it now. Let all of the coffee percolate through and filter through first. And then give it a stir, mix it all together so that we get a complete package of flavor, complexity, and texture. What we're looking for is a heavier mouthfeel to most other cold brews that you taste homemade in the market today. That's gonna take a while. Be right back. And it's been about uh, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and it's just been dripping. Most of the liquid is dripped down. But usually what I like to do is I like to give it a solid tap to get any excess liquid out of this bed. These are the ones that it's going to have the most mouthfeel, the most flavor coming out of that very heavy bed of coffee. Now you don't want to do this too much because the amount of weight that you've actually put in that filter and the amount of liquid might cause it to be unstable and you don't want to rip the filter. And you can see just how much coffee is in there it's like a big brownie the filter is just holding the coffee grounds in place and the coffee moving through is kind of creating like a bed filtration similar to like a water filter now that we have our coffee our cold brew I'm just gonna give it a quick stir and integrate together all of the different flavors and mouthfeels that we got from the beginning of the drip process to the end now we'll give it a taste. Deep chocolate, sweet, clean, no sediment, very, very milky chocolate mouthfeel, which is what we're going after. That's a great cold brew. Now, as you saw, we used Purge coffee. They were espresso level grounds. Most cold brews are made out of coarse grounds. Uh, in this case, we use espresso grounds and it, it really allows for that deeper, thicker mouthfeel. It's also a blend of coffees. It's totally random coffees that, uh, that we've been using throughout the month. It's a good way to kind of uh, use coffees that you would otherwise throw away. We want to use every part of the coffee and not waste any coffee. So that's why we do our cold brew this way. The results are great. Uh, there's a nice homogenized coffee flavor of all of these things mixed together but also you get a more efficient cold brew by the coffees actually being old and pretty stale. There's no more carbon dioxide uh, traps in, inside the coffee. It doesn't absorb so much water. So our, we get a very efficient cold brew where we have a lot of yield. Um, and cold brew is notoriously low yield for the amount of coffee that you use. So it makes sense to use coffees that are already going to be uh, wasted. That's how we do our cold brew in a honeycomb. Give it a try. Let me know in the comments below or send me a DM on Instagram. Tag me in your stories. I'm at K.O. Uh, follow at Daily Drink Mag and at Honeycomb Manila for all that's going on here in Beverage and in our studio here in Double Dragon Plaza, Pasay City, Manila, the Philippines. I wish you guys good luck. I wish you guys good health. I wish you guys some great coffee.